this is Eric Greb, editor of Neurology Reviews at the 72nd Annual Meeting of the American Epilepsy Society. With me is Dr. Dilip Nair, Section Head of Adult Epilepsy at the Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Nair has presented a study of long-term treatment with the Neuropace Responsive Neurostimulation System, or RNS. Dr. Nair, could you please briefly describe how the system works? Absolutely. Uh, the responsive neural stimulation is a neuromodulatory system that works in what's called a closed loop system. So what we're doing with this device is we are asking the device to sense continuously brain activity. And the device then under, identifies through parameter changes that have been programmed by the scientist or by the physician to, to say that this particular pattern on the brain waves that are being sensed is a seizure pattern. So there's a sensing element of this uh, device. Following the sense, sensation that there, or following a detection that a seizure has occurred, this stimulator essentially closes the loop by delivering brief pulses of stimulation during the ictal period, during what is detected as an epileptiform discharge. And so that's the system. It's a closed loose system that's continuously sensing, and then once an ictal discharge is uh, identified, an electrical stimulus is, done, is given to interrupt that electrical uh, activity within the brain. Uh, we call this neuromodulation because there's an effect of time that occurs in, in this therapy that we see that there's benefit that's accruing over the years in the course of this therapy. What were the study population and the methodology? So the patients that were recruited into the study were adults, 18 years of, of age and older, who had failed two or three anti-seizure medications. Uh, they were met the criteria for medically intractable epilepsy. But beyond that, these were patients who had very uh, high burden of seizures. They had, on average, uh, 10 seizures per month. Uh, they had long duration of epilepsy, up to 20 years was the mean duration of epilepsy. So these were sick patients with epilepsy in whom uh, VNS had failed prior, some of those third of the patients had tried VNS and it did not work. A third of patients had uh, prior epilepsy surgery, either a disconnection surgery or section surgery, and uh, they continued to have seizures. So these were uh, amongst some of the most intractable patients that we had in our clinic. So the methodology of this study in, in recruited patients who were enrolled in two prior studies. One was the feasibility study in which patients were enrolled to assess the safety of the device. And then second was the pivotal trial of the study which was uh, designed to look at both safety and efficacy of the, uh, of the device. And those both were two-year studies and at the end of the two-year studies these patients were then enrolled into the long-term treatment trial which was an entire seven-year additional period of time where safety and efficacy was monitored. What effects did RNS have on seizure frequency and seizure freedom? So over the course of the seven years of study, what we saw was a continued improvement in reducing seizures over time. So at year three, there was about a 55% reduction in seizure frequency when compared to the seizure frequency at the baseline or prior to the end. By year nine, that median percentage reduction was up to 75%. And there was a third of patients at the end of that nine-year observation period in whom their seizures were reduced greater than 90 percent, so a significant reduction in their seizures. And yet, eight, in addition to that, 18 percent of patients at some point in, that, in, our, in this uh, seven-year observation study had at least a year or longer of being seizure-free. Did treatment affect neuropsychological outcomes? So the neuropsychological outcomes were uh, assessed by uh, comprehensive neuro uh, psychological testing, both in the, uh, in the um, pivotal trial, but were continued to be assessed during the study. And there was no significant worsening of any of the 14 measures of neurocognitive uh, effects that were measured during the, during the testing. And yet, in addition to that, there was uh, improvements seen, statistically significant improvements seen in verbal memory. Uh, and that was significantly uh, seen more in patients who had mesial le uh, electrodes in the mesial temporal lobe. And there were some also benefits in uh, naming that was seen in the neocortical patients. What did you learn about the treatment safety? So in the trial, we, uh, safety was assessed 
uh, both from a surgical complication question uh, and also from stimulation, for uh, any issues related to uh, stimulation of the brain. So if we first look at the surgical rates of surgical complications, they include things like infection and hemorrhage. And neither of those were any statistic any different than what was be what would be expected for a device for Parkinson's disease, uh, intracranial device and a neuromodulatory device for Parkinson's disease or, or epilepsy. So the rates more specifically uh, are 4.1 percent rates of infection per stimulator procedure. Uh, and 3.5% uh, rates of, in, uh, of intracranial hemorrhage. The majority of those were asymptomatic. And if we talk about the stimulation-related side effects, there were no clear stimulation-related side effects noted in the study, and that's in, in, uh, in, it's a reason for that is because stimulation parameters are adjusted in the clinic. We can tell right away within the clinic visit itself whether there are any stimulation elicited side effects, so we can determine that and adjust the stimulation during the clinic visit itself.